Okay, welcome back. Let's continue. And what we have now is a physical slider. This is actually not one I want to put in the level. I just did it now to demonstrate something because this looks terrible and it may have some additional stuff that we want to put in it. So what we normally want to do is to create a thing on top of this a BP physical slider child so now that, that I used the name slider already a mover slider and slider slider <laughs> I actually had to open up Visual Studio and see what do they call such a thing and it just happens that they call such a gadget a track bar so I, in this case I could use the term track bar I think maybe, um, do we have something in the UMG uh, widget, uh, widget free. no, not widget free. oh yeah, um, oh, fuck. it's called a slider in here, so I already took the name slider. Um, It's okay. It's going to be fine. I'm going to call this a track bar. Physical track bar. So the thing about the physical track bar is where we want to add in stuff like the surrounding stuff like the bar here, the beam or whatever we call that. And I'm just saying maybe we call it the beam because I did maybe make a beam. <laughs> so that is exactly what I'm going to add in here. Um, static mesh, beam mesh, and I have an SM beam like this, which you can see in here. Also, the static mesh right now is way too big. So that's definitely not uh, preferable. Um, so I am I have two options here really one is to scale it down which I prefer not to because it's gonna create a few things but it's actually maybe gonna be kind of a good idea to do just to illustrate some of the issues that I'm gonna have uh, with this setup or at least uh, well some challenges but also some things that I just need to be aware of it's not gonna be a problem really it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. We're going to be fine. So I'm going to set this to zero. What? 0 0.1. Like this. This is looking like a really nice little handle on this slider here. So I, I, in, intuitively, what I want to do is just to move this to the beginning here. This is going to cause some problems because we just set up our logic so that it starts offsets uh, everything to the to the right, I think, along the positive x. So what we need to do in this case is actually to offset this one uh, 50 centimeters because my my limit is 100 in this case here. Just this example here. Um, but you can see that this also illustrates another problem, uh, which is if I were to resize my actor, then these distances that I set up visually now is not going to hold because it's not going to be 100 units long anymore. So it's a few things you need to be careful about when you use this technique. It's not flawless, and I can't really just you know figure out a better way to do that. But the this at least does work and just need to be a little bit careful how you set your things up. So now this is starting at zero and 100 is up here. And if I were to set up uh, 200 as, a, as a, a limit, then it would be out here somewhere. So it would be very handy for us if we could see visually how far does this go? Uh, when uh, is, it, is it allowed to go? And there's actually something we can pretty easily just set up here. Uh, and we can actually do that because it will come in handy it can come in handy at 
about any level. So I'm gonna go all the way back, all the way up. Actually, let me update my drawing here uh, while I remember. Um, so we just added in a track bar. So this is a what we will call a placeable um, can contain other specific stuff. Um, right. So this is the purpose of this. Let's get move that out of the way and go to the BP mover. So in the construction script, uh, we have some stuff going on uh, already, uh, but we want to do something else also. So we're going to make a sequence here and say we also want to do some fancy stuff with showing a ghost version of our uh, minimum and our maximum and where the object is going to start at. That stuff we haven't really dealt with at all yet. We are not dealing with the value yet. It's something uh, we're gonna get to in just a moment. Uh, so bear with me just a little bit longer and then we're just gonna start to see some really nice results pump out really fast. Okay, so the static mesh component, this guy here, we want to create a copy of that that we can show in design time only. And that means that we're not going to execute this in runtime. Um, so we're going to drag out, actually we're not going to drag out, we're going to call add static mesh component, this guy here. Uh, I'm going to move it up here. And we don't know where it's going to be because it can be anywhere. Uh, and the starting position is gonna be uh, determined by the specific component implementation. Uh, it's not something we can determine down here. So we're gonna, just gonna fill in some, some, some default values uh, for this. So uh, make it transform. And for now, let's just keep it at, as zero, zero and one for the scale here yeah. uh, and this is going to give us a mesh uh, static mesh reference which we are going to promote to a variable because we need to destroy this when we start running the game so we're going to call this uh, the ghost uh, min mesh i think i'd better because we're going to have a few of these i'm going to put it down here just for a moment um, Right, so we're gonna get the mesh component as well here uh, because this has a static mesh uh, reference. So this is the actual box in this case here uh, that we want to set on the ghost mesh. So it has the same uh, representation. So we're gonna drag out here and set static mesh like this to be equal to this. Now it has the same look, uh, but it's positioned some uh, well, in this case, on top of it right now. So we're going to create or assign a, a, a material to this. Uh, we can drag out a new one here and say, oh, we can just be lazy and drag out like uh, something here and say set material like that and then select a M I max hmm. ghost max. So you may be wondering why I have the, the, these materials from. Uh, it's the ghost material, which is just a translucent. I did I talk about this before? I can't remember. But it's a very simple material. It's a translucent, uh, volumetric directional material with a parameter color. I can set and the 0.25 for opacity and that's it. 
That's all it is. So I created um, three instances of it, one called MI Ghost Max, MI Ghost Minimum, and MI, MI Ghost Initial. And now that I think about it, I want to make this a little bit darker. Like this. Okay, so I'm going to set that here. And I'm going to call it also from the construction script. That's the first thing. So what happens now is that, oh, if I put it in my level also, uh, here we have a white uh, or green box on top of it so if I set a limit of 100 I would have a limit of 100 but it's not happening right now because we're not doing anything with it that is the thing that we need to put on the more specific uh, control which is the physical slider in this case here so on the physical slider uh, component uh, we're doing some stuff here and we should also do some additional stuff so we're going to fill in a sequence here uh, so we can also execute that stuff so we're going to offset this ghost minimum mesh we're going to set the relative location of this to be at the minimum or mass, uh, the limit in the x-axis because this is the relative and we're only dealing with the x-axis and this is the beauty of this solution because it's just making things so easy to deal with we're only moving things in one direction uh, so drag this out do whatever you want break make sorry a vector and fill in the the limit in here so compile and save so now you can see where it's it it's going to be the limit 2500 and it could go all the way over here so this is just going to be super handy for us when we start um, designing our levels but when we play the game, we don't want this to be in the level. So obviously we, we need to get rid of it, this at begin play. And we need to do that always. So I'm going to put that logic on the begin play uh, on the BP mover, our base, base, base object. So begin play. And then we need to do something like uh, detect or ask if uh, this is valid maybe it, it's not set for some reason I don't know could be that it, it wasn't run I don't know uh, want to make this check anyway so if this is valid then we want to call destroy component like this and we're going to need a few of these so i'm going to also fire in a sequence for this so we can get a few of these going um, because we want to have one at minimum at maximum and at the actual uh, place so when i hit play now and turn around i cannot see the, the green version Obviously, all this stuff here with the extra ghost version of the, the object here, you want to take that out eventually so it's not putting on an extra over, um, uh, overhead of constructing things. So you want to disconnect all this stuff here before you ship anything and also disconnect all this stuff uh, with this so it doesn't happen. But again, the beauty of this is that you just need to do this on the base level and then it's going to propagate out to all your, your um, um, instances of this so it's going to be super easy to just make sure to do that so you don't um, add this extra, extra overhead uh, where you go, we go 
Oh, wait, what's this one? I'm confused. I think I disabled two things. Oh, it was the begin play in here. Sorry. <laughs> so we want to add in, let's see how much time did I spend on this? We can add the rest also. Let's just do that. Um, let's do the same duplicate and duplicate. And this is going to be the max mesh. And this is going to be the initial mesh. And we're going to just copy paste this stuff here. It's probably something that we should make a function for, but I can't be bothered this time. When I'm going to clean this up eventually, it's probably going to do that. So this is going to be the max mesh, and this is going to be the initial mesh. And in the construction script, we can just duplicate this junk here. So yeah, you'll definitely want to um, make a function for these things here. There's no really need to have the exact same code so many times. Although it does look nice. <laughs> um, this call this and just use the same transform over and over here's the maximum and then oh this was the minimum this is the maximum and this is the current. And this is the initial. Like that. And then all we need now to do is to figure out where we should, we should put these things here. Uh, the physical slider here. For the minimum, we don't need to move it at all, offset it anything, because it's going to be at, at zero, zero, zero. That's the way we're designing this, or I am designing this. You are probably just wondering if there's another way of doing it. <laughs> no, uh, I hope, hope you can uh, follow along and think it's a good idea. Anyway, if you don't, um, you, I will hope you will let me know uh, and tell me what else you would do instead. So this ghost min mesh, I switched something uh, up here. Hang on a sec. This is the minimum, and this is the minimum, and this is the maximum. Okay, so I need to move the maximum. Sorry. I messed up something. So this is actually the max I need to set, and this is supposed to be the init uh, initial one. But it's not going to move the uh, distance of the limit. It's going to move the distance of the value, whatever we set that to. So when we compile this and have a look, we can see there's a red box in the beginning, there's a green box here. And if we set the value to be, let's say, 25, it's going to move a black version up somewhere. Let's say 200 and 250. So we're going to have something in the middle. This gives us a very nice representation in design mode, how things are going to look. Notice that it doesn't place the actual um, box at that point. We can see that because we haven't done anything with that. It's still standing in the initial location. So none of that stuff has been fixed yet. And frankly, I think I'm going to cover that part in the next video. I just wanted to have this uh, over because it's, it's a very nice design thing uh, to have in here. Um, we put this in the physical slider. So that means that all of this stuff is also working for the physical track bar. 
uh, with the beam mesh which we currently have right here and you can see um, here's the thing where it kind of falls a little bit apart uh, and this is the physical slider so if we move, remove that one and dump in the physical track bar we're gonna see something looking like this this is not exactly uh, what we'd expect because I scaled things down a little bit, uh, th things down uh, quite a bit, it's going to look like this. And, well, you would expect the boxes to way, be way more uh, smaller. So we're missing a little bit, little bit something in here, and that is the scale. So we're going to grab the static mesh component uh, world scale. Yes, world scale I believe it is even though it is a um, I think this is is a relative transform but I think this is correct if I'm not mistaken yeah so now we can see why it's gonna start and end for for this dude here so if we were just said we want to start in the middle then we have a pretty good preview of how things are gonna look A lot of this stuff here is really optional. You don't need it, but it's going to be very handy. You can see I also did that with the, the moving platforms here. When I design my levels, I can see this platform is going to move here. If I wanted it to move uh, over to the corner, I can pretty precisely place it where it's going to be this way. So now it's going to move from a, a direct path directly. To here it's just a linear moving platform uh, there's nothing with any um, splines or anything it's just going to move uh, linearly but yeah the idea behind this these ghost versions that's the same i use for that okay I think uh, that should be what I had for this video. We're going to continue in the next and keep on building extra functionality because now we are on the level where this physical track bar is actually a placeable. So now that we have it, we are going to move it into the placeables folder like this. Together with recline box, we have a moving platform, we have a no pass box, uh, we have a rotating platform as well. And now we also have a physical track bar uh, component that we can add to our level. So this is just one way of organizing things uh, for ourselves. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, thank you for staying along so far, if you have been along here so far. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next video.